Let's take a look at math, grade 4, module 5, lesson 27. Fraction equivalence, ordering, and operations. Topic E, extending fraction equivalence to fractions greater than 1. Okay, so we're going to use tape diagrams to help us compare 3 and 3 eighths to 3 and 3 fourths. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw our tape diagrams. Now here's a tape diagram to represent three wholes and three eighths. So let's talk about how that represents that. What I'm showing is that I have an amount. And I'm just labeling that amount with a three. Saying this represents three wholes. Now my three eighths I represent using this rectangle that I've separated into eight parts and I shaded in three of them. Now I'm going to get one that is three and three-fourths. Now it's the same size as the other one because it's showing three holes and it's showing another hole that's broken into four parts. And three of those parts are shaded. That represents three-fourths. So now we can compare these two tape diagrams to see which one has the greater amount shaded in. Well, three and three-fourths has more shaded in than three and three-eighths. So three and three-eighths is less than three and three-fourths. Now let's compare two fractions with unrelated denominators. In this case, I have a mixed number. I have four and three-fourths. Over here, I have twenty-three fifths. So this is a fraction greater than 1. I will need to first change this fraction greater than 1 into a mixed number. So let's think about it on a number bond. So here's my number bond and I'm going to take my 23 fifths and I'm going to put it in the hole and then I'm going to think about how I'm going to break it up. I want to break this fraction into two parts so that I have my holes on one side and my fraction pieces on the other. So let's think about what one hole would be if it were broken into fifths. Well that would be five fifths. So two holes would be ten fifths, three holes would be fifteen fifths, four holes would be twenty fifths, and five holes would be twenty-five fifths. So twenty fifths would equal four. That would leave me with three fifths left over. Saying this is four works like this. It's really saying that I have five fifths, which is the same as saying one. I have that four times. I have four times five fifths, which equals twenty fifths. So my number bond helps me see that twenty three fifths is equal to four, here they are, one, two, three, and four, plus this three fifths. So four and three fifths is equal to twenty-three fifths. So I'm going to put my four and three fifths underneath here and I'm going to move my four and three fourths next to it so we remember that we're, this is what we're comparing. Now let's get rid of that number bond so we have some space to compare four and three fourths to four and three fifths. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first think about my holes. So I don't really need to look at the fours. I know that those are equal. That the difference between these two numbers has to do with the fractions. So I'm just going to draw my area model to show the fractional parts in this situation. So I'm going to draw an area model that shows three-fourths. And I'm going to draw an area model that shows three-fifths. Now this one I'm drawing with horizontal lines and my fourth I'm going to draw with vertical lines. And I'm going to do that because 
I want to show something that we did in a previous lesson where we took our horizontal lines and we extended them over into our area model with fourths. And then we took the vertical lines from the fourths and we extended them into the area model for the fifths. We do this to show 4 times 5 because I have 4 columns and 5 rows. 5 times 4 is 20. So I don't even need to count. I know that there are 20 spaces in this area model. And I know that there are 20 spaces in this area model. What I do need to count is the number of shaded parts. I don't know how many shaded parts are there. Unless I think about multiplying not just my 4 by 5, but I could also multiply this 3 by 5. In this case, I took 3 fourths. And I said, okay, 3 fourths is equal to 3 fourths times 5 fifths. And I picked 5 because that was the denominator of my other fraction that I'm comparing it to. And when I do the multiplication for this, I get 15 twentieths. 3 times 5 is 15. 4 times 5 is 20. Now, when I come over to this side, I had 3 fifths, and I multiplied my 3 fifths times something. The number that I picked was created using the denominator from the other fraction that I'm comparing 3 fifths to. So I'm multiplying 3 fifths times 4 fourths. I will multiply my numerator by 4, I will multiply my denominator by 4, and I will get 12 twentieths. Now I can see that 4 and 3 fourths is equal to 15 twentieths. 23 fifths is equal to 12 twentieths. So I can compare these fractions now because they have like units, like denominators. Now I can compare my mixed number and my fraction. And I can see that 3 and 3 fourths is greater than 23 fifths. All right, that'll take care of things for lesson 27, where we've been working to compare fractions greater than 1 by creating common numerators or denominators.